Hi, it's Kelly Van Washenova here from Educational Technology Services at Denison. I'm going to go through a few options for how you can schedule a Zoom meeting. Now, I know it can be a little confusing because there are so many choices you can make and part of it really is dependent on your own preference, but I'm just going to walk through the three options that we're presenting as ways you can schedule your Zoom meetings. So the first option I'm going to cover is Denison's Zoom web portal. And this is the one that you've probably heard of if you've attended any of the Zoom trainings here at Denison. So to access the Zoom portal, you're going to go to denison.zoom US. And when you go to this page, you're given three options and you're going to choose sign in. And you will have to go through your Denison sign in. And once you're in, you can see that the default is to go to this meetings area and you can see any meetings that you've already scheduled in here. To schedule a new meeting, you can choose schedule a new meeting. And then you can go right ahead and put your meeting information. So if I was doing this for a class, I would put my class, something like that, class meetings. You can give it a description if you'd like. And then when, this is where you're going to schedule the first meeting. So I'm going to choose tomorrow at 3.30. You choose your duration. And if you run over, it's fine. It's not going to cut you off. You also have an option here to choose if it's recurring. And you can set the recurrence here as daily. One nice thing is you can choose no fixed time if you don't want it to be always um, you know, locked to a certain time. Uh, you can also choose weekly. And in the weekly options, you can pick multiple days. So if you have a Tuesday, Thursday class, this would be a setup that you might have and you can choose an end date for December or you can choose a number of occurrences. So that's, that's one way that you could set that up. Again, choosing weekly gave me these options, but I could always choose no fixed time and it would just be basically open to whenever. Passcodes are enabled by default, so that is there. Now, the waiting room option right here, uh, you can turn off waiting room. This, what waiting room does is it's putting everyone who's joining your meeting in the waiting room. And if you want to turn it off, that means they could just walk right in. Uh, so for classes, it might be nice to turn that off. Down here, you have additional meeting options. You can choose to allow them to join before the host, and that would mean that they can go ahead and come on in to the meet before you arrive. Other options are also included here. I recommend using mute participants upon entry. This way, if someone comes in and their dog is barking or there's some kind of chaos happening, um, they will be muted when they first enter. These are other options that you have. Uh, you can do pre-assigned breakout rooms. I'm not going into that right now. But the record the meeting automatically, I really like this option. And I would check it and choose in the cloud. And then after your meeting, you can go in and download the recording onto your computer um, to keep it for your records. So that is one way to do it. So these are the settings I'm going to choose. And once I hit save, I can see that it has generated an invite link. And this, if you look closely where I'm hovering right here, you can see that there's this PWD. They've embedded the password because we've gotten a lot of questions about how do I put the password in? But as long as you copy the link that has this PWD part in it where the password's embedded, you don't have to worry about that. So after you've created it here, you can also click to add it right to your Google Calendar. And it's asking me this because I had two accounts. And then you can see right there, it's embedded right in my Google Calendar, all of the information I need for this. And if I hit save, it will be all set on my calendar. 
So what I recommend doing to share the meeting with students is to copy this link here that has that password embedded. And I just hit Command C because I'm on a Mac. You can hit Control C if you're on a PC and copy just the link and pasting that in your document setting in Notebull. This way they always have it at their fingertips. As long as you've set it up as a recurring meeting, the invite link will always be the same. Okay, so the second option you have for scheduling your Zoom meetings is to use the Zoom scheduler extension, and that is available to put right in the Chrome browser. So to do that, you can just go to chrome.google.com, and you can click on extensions here, and type in Zoom scheduler, and that will come up right here at the top. And it's giving me the option to rate it because I already have it installed. If you don't have it installed, you will see Add to Chrome as your option. So you can click on that and add it right to Chrome. Right in here, um, if you open it, you also will see the Add to Chrome there. Again, I see Remove from Chrome because I've already installed it on my Chrome browser. And after you install it, I think you might actually have to cr close Chrome and reopen it. But once you do, you'll have it installed. And what the Zoom scheduler extension is going to allow you to do is to just go ahead and make a regular event in your calendar and turn it into a Zoom meeting. So to do that, I would click on a blank space in my calendar where I want to schedule my class. I would enter the class name. And if I click make it a Zoom meeting, it's going to go ahead and just close it out and make it a one-off Zoom meeting. But when I go into more options here, I can see I have all of the calendar options that I have in Google Calendar, and I can set it up to repeat. If I choose custom, I can make it a couple days a week. I can make it multiple days. I can choose when it ends, and I can hit done there. So now I've set it up. I have it going for one hour. You can always change those times. And here, this is where I'm going to add uh, this option here of make it a Zoom meeting. And once I click it, you can see that it has populated the link right there. And this is that Zoom link that I'm just going to copy, Command C or Control C on a PC. And I'm going to paste this link right in the Documents tab of my Noble course. It will be the same link for all of them as long as I'm doing this recurring. So that's important to know. Something else to keep in mind is if you choose the option up here to add guests in this guest area over here. So let's say I want to add Donnie. So I've added Donnie as a guest. And what you'll notice is that Google Calendar by default when you add a guest, they put a link for Google Meet. So if you are adding a guest right to the calendar, make sure you get rid of the Google Meet option because you only want that Zoom meeting showing up there. I'm going to get rid of Donnie so she's not confused. And then I'm going to hit Save. And you will see that I have the Spanish class. I have it occur reoccurring on my calendar for those times. And it is already set up with all the Zoom information in there. Now, something to know is if you create it on your Google Calendar, you can still go ahead and update that in that Zoom web portal where you can access the more options for your account. So I'm just going to go back to that Zoom web portal, denison.zoom.us, sign in. So if I want to go in and edit that meeting I created in the Google Calendar, I'm in the meetings area right when I come in. You can scroll down and you'll see these are all that W101. That was the first example I did earlier. But this one at the very top is the Spanish 21501 that I created using the extension, the Zoom scheduler extension. And you can see that the start time, it just says recurring. So if I go in and if I click on Spanish 21501, I can see the information about it here. But say I wanted to change some of these meeting options, I can do that just by clicking Edit This Meeting. And in there, I can make some changes. 
Now something you'll notice is that the scheduler just made it a no fixed time recurrence. So I can change that if I want, but there's nothing wrong with the no fixed time. So I can leave it. Down here I could turn off the waiting room if I wanted. I could also choose to do the record automatically, which I recommend. And I could choose the cloud option there. And then I can hit save. So now I've edited the meeting that I created in my Google Calendar using the Zoom scheduler extension, but I edit it right here in the denison.zoom.us area. Um, so the only difference there is I came in here to just modify some of those options, which you can do. So now let's take a look at the third option, which is using the Zoom desktop application. So what do I mean when I say the Zoom desktop application? What I mean when I'm talking about that is in your desktop, on your desktop, you've downloaded the Zoom application. And if you haven't done that, you can do that through the Zoom website. But once you have it installed on a Mac, you can go down to your launch pad and you can find it. And it's going to be the zoom.us here for me. Uh, you could also do a search. So for a Mac, the search is in the top right. If you're on a PC, you can search with the search bar in the bottom. So I can just type in Zoom here and you can see the desktop application. So this is one that I'm opening on my computer. And if you haven't signed in, it's going to prompt you to sign in. Um, please make sure that before you go into the desktop application, you've at least gone into the Denison Zoom web portal once so that it registers your account as licensed through Denison. And you'll know if it's done that by clicking on your face up here. If you have the licensed next to your username information, then that means you are part of that Zoom licensed account area. So in here, you do have the option to schedule a meeting. And you can see all of the additional information related to scheduling. So I'm going to use another class. I will do Biology 201. We'll make this section two. And then you can see you have options to recur. So I did the recurring meeting and it's not going to give me as many options as I get in that web portal. So keep that in mind. Again, I like to go through web portal to update if I've made changes. But here I can go ahead and do that. Uh, by default, it has the password checked and that's right, I want that. Then. As I look down, I can choose to do some more advanced options. And in this advanced options area, I can click to do uh, turn off the waiting room if I want. I can let people join before me. I can also automatically record the meeting in the cloud. So more options than using just the Chrome extension, but you cannot set up the recurring dates or anything like that. It's telling you you will have to do that in your calendar invitation. So once I have this created, and I have Google Calendar checked down here, that's the default, I can hit Schedule. And what it did, and you didn't see because it opened it in a new tab, is it opened my Google Calendar for me, and it has generated this information. And I can then go ahead and customize how I want my repeat to be. And I can set my end date and do all of that information that I demoed in the other parts. And then I can hit save there. And now I will have that also on my calendar. So those are the options for scheduling your Zoom meetings using the Zoom web portal that Denison has, using the Chrome Zoom scheduler extension, and then also using the Zoom desktop app. I hope this was helpful. If you need anything else, please reach out to the Denison ITS service desk, and they can be reached at servicedesk at denison.edu. Thank you.